well, this is really important. So in today's conversation, I want to talk to you about IRS Form 720. Of course, we are speaking about quarterly federal excise tax return, line by line instructions. Okay. How do you file the form properly? So I want you to stick around till the end of today's conversation. Welcome back, folks, to another edition of the Awesome Sweetie Kiwi Show. How are you today? I hope you are doing fantastic. I'm doing marvelous, if you ought to ask me. If you are doing as great as I am, go grab a cup of coffee, or tea, or vodka, now let's roll. <laughs> In today's conversation, we want to talk about IRS Form 720. Of course, we are speaking about quarterly federal excise tax returns and return line-by-line -line instructions, okay? Let me first give you the overview here. What are we talking about? What is Form 720? Well, this is actually a tax form for businesses that sell goods or services subject to excise tax to report and pay those taxes. It's very important. So, IRS Form 720 actually consists of three parts, okay, as well as Schedule A, Schedule T, and Schedule C sections, and a payment voucher called Form 720V. So, if your business is responsible for completing Form 720, you must do so quarterly, very important, quarterly, and you can file electronically or by mail, depends on, depends on you. And payments for excise taxes, however, are required semi-monthly, I'm talking about twice a month, and should be made by electronic funds transfer, okay? So I want you to see the delta between when you have to make the payments and when you have to report those taxes, okay? So what's an excise tax? Well, it's basically a tax the federal government imposes on specific services or goods manufactured in or imported into the United States. So excise taxes are often included in the price of products such as gas or alcohol, okay? So this is really important. And uh, who is the audience for this uh, excise tax? Let me just clarify. I want to go a little deeper here. So your business needs to fill out IRS Form 720 if you sell goods or services that incur excise taxes. So these products and services can include but are not limited to telephone communications, air transportation, gas, passenger ship transportation, coal, fishing equipment, indoor tanning services. Okay, uh, you, uh, you have uh, bows and arrows. Okay, you have tires, you have vaccines. So basically, it's uh, the list here is not exhaustive. But uh, this is what it is. If you need more information, you want to go to the IRS's website. There you have all the products and services that are subject to the excise taxes, okay? And if your business does not deal with any of these products or services, you don't have to fill out the form, okay? Very important. Let me talk to you about the timing. So when do you have to fill out Form 720? Well, you need to f fill out a form every quarter okay so here are the deadlines so the first quarter january february march it's due the the, the 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 filing is due by april 30th second quarter april may june due by july 31st the third quarter july august september is due by uh, august I'm sorry october 31st and uh, the fourth quarter October, November, December is due by January 31st, okay? If the due date for filing Form 720 falls on a weekend or a legal holiday, you can file by the next business day. Let's talk about payments. So paying your excise taxes. Remember I told you early, earlier that you must pay excise taxes semi-monthly, twice a month, okay? The IRS considers a semi-monthly period as the first 15 days of the month. So that's the first semi-monthly period or the 16th through the last day of the month, the second semi-monthly period, okay? So if you're in February, for example, you, you're going to have to pay the due date is uh, February 15, and the other one is February 28th or 29th, okay? So if your business is paying excise taxes for communications or air transportation, you have the option to pay according to an, an, uh, something they have negotiated. It's called an alternative schedule as dictated by the Form 720 instructions, okay? And this is something totally different. If you're interested, if you have questions about that, just let it know 
let, let us know in the comment section and we'll get back to you on that. An excise tax deposit must be made to the IRS by electronic transfer, okay, aka ACH deposits, and submitted at least one day before the date the deposit is due. So if the date, let's say the due date is January 15th, right, the payment must be submitted by January 14th. So I really want you to be aware of all those uh, the timing issues, those deadlines, very important because otherwise you are going to have uh, penalties to account for. And you don't want that, we don't want that for you, okay? And if a payment due date falls on a weekend or a legal holiday, the previous business day becomes the de facto deadline. So what I'm trying to, the, the, to recap here, you have to file the form quarterly, but you have to make payments twice a month okay so the form is just a way for the IRS to know exactly what's going on in terms of excise taxes in your business but you have to make the payments twice a month so it's very important that you you remember those two elements in terms of information so where do you find a form 720 well, you can actually go to the IRS website and you have them there. You can print and mail a completed form to the IRS. Okay, not a problem. You can even file electronically by working with a tax professional who participates in the IRS e-file program for excise taxes. Okay, and the IRS has a database of participating preparers if you want to find one in your area. Very important. So it's totally up to you. You want to do the research, make sure that you have somebody around you, a CPA or an EA who has expertise in the field. Okay. Now, let's talk about the instructions. So, Form 720 instructions, I want to give you a step-by-step -step guide. So, now that you actually got the basics of the form, let's dive deeper into the specific parts of the form, okay? And I want you to pay attention here. It's very important here and how you need to fill things out. First of all, I want you to gather accounting documents and you need to fill out your business information. Your business information is critical. The IRS wants to have more idea about what's, they want to have a clear idea of what's going on with your business. So you can see on the screen here, the form is called a 720, okay, and a quarterly federal excise tax return. And the first part is very simple. So you need to actually put your, your, your name, we're talking about your business name though, okay, not your personal name, your name for your business name. You have to put the quarter ending. Remember, I told you there are four quarters. Okay, and you have to put the quarter ending, whether it is March 31st, June 30th, September 30th, or December 31st. You have to put that, and you have to put your um, your address, your business's address, very important, and you fill out the rest of the form so you have uh, your, um, your, uh, your EIN, they want to have your EIN, you should have your EIN, and they, have, they also put your address information. Remember, your accounting software can generate reports to help you calculate your excise taxes for Form 720. So depending on your specific business, your excise taxes are either a percentage of total sales or a percentage of units sold, okay? So the first part of, as you can see on the screen, the first part, the first part of uh, IRS Form 720 S for basic business information, okay? Nothing really complicated here though. So m make sure that you check. If you see uh, to your left side, you will see final return or address change. If those two, if either of those two applies to this tax return you're filing, make sure you check the appropriate box. I'll be right back right after this, don't go anywhere. Welcome back, folks, to another session of the Awesome Sweetie Kiwi Show. We are still continuing now. We're diving deeper into the IRS Form 720. And I want you to look right now on the screen. The second screenshot, you want to calculate the appropriate excise taxes and you fill out Form 720, Part 1. So you can see there are a lot of things here in terms of environmental taxes, communications and air transportation taxes, fuel taxes. Now, this will depend on the industry you're in, okay? But one thing I want to say here is that normally, you should have, you want to look at the, the uh, your tax returns for last year. You want to look at the uh, the effect of it that you get from the inter, from the IRS to see what kind of uh, percentage you have to pay. But the rates are here. So for instance, you can see for fuel taxes, you can see the rates, the number of gallons, okay, what you have to pay per, uh, per gallon. The rates are here. So it's just simply uh, 
a math problem okay so you want to complete part one of form 720 if your business needs to pay the following taxes environmental taxes okay we're talking about petroleum oil spills imported petro petroleum products ozone depleting chemicals okay and if you must pay this environmental taxes you also have to complete form 6627 don't forget that 6627 and or if you are in communication and air transportation taxes i mean if you owe that phone service or air transportation fuel taxes we're talking about diesel okay gas natural gas biomass and so on and so forth retail taxes okay so trucks trailers and tractors ship passengers taxes also foreign insurance taxes this is very important and you can see this is actually the second part of on the, on the screen here okay and you can see that for every category you have the rate the rate depends on the category so for some categories you have uh, the uh, the percentage of sales price in some for some categories you have to provide it's like a, it's a fixed rate for instance transportation by water is three dollars per person okay so this is very fixed for other excise tax for example you have uh, obligations not in register form so that will be one cent per uh, per occurrence so those are really important so everything on form 720 part one has to deal with your business you have to find what really applies to your situation and if none of the excise taxes in part one apply to your business go to part two however if your business has had any tax liability in part one you need to complete the schedule a section of IRS form 720 now let's talk about uh, section 2b I want, to, I want you to look on the screen right now so this is actually this the section the schedule a section of form 720 is for businesses that have a tax liability in part one right if you don't have liability for part one but do have liability for part two you don't need to fill out schedule a so because schedule a really reports your business's net tax liability okay so in that schedule in schedule a you want to add the net tax liability for each tax for each semi-monthly period and you want to enter the total in the ap applicable box very important and one thing i want to see here is that you really want to have uh, you want to reconcile your data for this quarter to your data last last quarter to make sure that you are within you are within um yeah you are consistent okay now here is schedule a you can see on the screen this is what it looks like okay so basically you are putting uh, your uh, so this is if you owe if you owe some cash on uh, on uh, part one you have to complete sch schedule uh, schedule a and this is the so schedule a you can actually see your liabilities for first month second month third month and you can see that it's broken down by period so fifth to the first or 15th day and the 16th to the last day okay so this is a pretty straightforward and so if you have a net liability for a regular method taxes this is kind of cool if you go with the regular method taxes and they do have an alternative method taxes also that applies if you don't want to go with the regular method taxes it's very important to know that okay now let's go for step three so step three is you need to fill out part 720 part two i want you to look on the screen right now okay part two basically you want to complete this part two if your business provides any of the following products or services we're talking about specified health insurance policies fishing equipment electric outboard motors bows and arrows indoor tanning services waterways fuel biodiesel sold as fuel but not used as fuel so those are really specific fields but if you happen to be there in that category you need to fill out part two now you want to complete part two the same way as you would part one if your business qualifies for any of the goods or services in part two you want to calculate your tax using appropriate documents and uh, the rate in the rate column okay fill in the calculated tax in the tax column and add up the total at the bottom of part two you can see that on the screen here and one thing i want to say here that's very important is that the tax for health insurance is calculated differently than the other categories it uses the average number of lives covered as opposed to units sold or total sales okay this is very important to remember that now you want to determine if you need to fill out schedule t or schedule C and complete this sections of form 720 okay now as you can see here on the screen I'm showing you schedule T 
The thing here is that for Schedule T, you need to complete this schedule. If only your business produces or sells diesel fuel, kerosene, gas, or aviation gas. So those are things I want you to be very clear about. If you are in those industries, you want to pay attention here because Schedule T will report the total taxable fuel gallons received or delivered in a two-party exchange within a terminal. This phrase is really critical. The IRS has actually brought the businesses to court because people were not complying. So this Schedule T reports the total taxable fuel gallons received or delivered in a two-party exchange within a terminal. So in a two-party exchange, the person receiving the fuel, not the person delivering it, is liable for the tax imposed on the removal of taxable fuel from the terminal, okay? So you gotta see the, what kind of position you find yourself in, your business finds itself in, in, and this is where the tax liability actually sits. Are you the person receiving the fuel or are you the person delivering it? So the person receiving the fuel is liable for the tax imposed, okay? So if your business deals with any of these types of uh, fuels, according to the IRS definition of a two-party exchange, you need to complete Schedule C. Look right here on the screen for Schedule C. So this is what it is, okay? So you have the two-party exchange information reporting. So for you have to do it for fuel. So you have diesel fuel, okay? You, you have to put uh, diesel fuel in terms of gallons delivered or gallons received depending on the situation uh, you find yourself into, kerosene. So gallons received, gallons delivered, gas. Gallons received in a two-party exchange and uh, for gas, gallons delivered, okay? And for aviation gas, same thing. So here, the whole thing about Schedule T is that when we talk about a two-party exchange information, remember, within a terminal, within a terminal, you got to see whether you are the receiving party or you are the deliverer, okay? And based on those uh, uh, calculations or based on those uh, predispositions, if I will, if, if I may, you have to, uh, you have to uh, yeah, pay the taxes or not pay taxes. It's important to know this before filing Schedule T. I want to talk to you now about Schedule C, which is another schedule that's very important that is an addendum to uh, Form 720. Now, ske like Schedule T, Schedule C applies to businesses that deal with one of the fuel types and a few tire types indicated in Parts 1 and 2 of IRS Form 720. Okay, if you are liable for taxes on part one or part two, you may be able to cut your tax bill by filing a claim on Schedule C. However, and this is a big however, we have said this on other shows, only certain types of fuel and use cases qualify for a Schedule C claim. This Schedule C is different from the Schedule C of a Forms 1040 though, just want to clarify that. So the IRS indicates the use types that can qualify for a Schedule C. You can see on the screen here, okay, so we have a on a farm for farming purposes, we have uh, off-highway business use. You have the list here, okay? Exports. If you are in a boat engaged in commercial fishing in certain inner city and local buses, in a qualified local bus, okay? And uh, so you have a list here on the screen of uh, all the use types that qualify. Now, if your business, if your fuel business falls under one of the use cases on this chart, on the chart on the screen right now, you can fill in Schedule C by indicating the use case number. Remember, you have numbers, right? One to 16, the tax rates, gallons amounts, and the total dollar amount of your claim, okay? But please be sure that you are be comfortable. Be You, ha you gotta have all the proof before you file Schedule C, okay? So on the screen here, the first, the first screenshot, so you can see, here is how Schedule C looks like c for claims okay so you have to put the month your income tax year ends if it's if it's december put december you can see here that it depends on what kind of uh, claims you're filing so non-taxable use of gas non-taxable use of aviation gas non-taxable use of undyed diesel fuel okay there are different categories and non-taxable use of undyed kerosene okay so those are things you have to uh, put so you can see that there are there are columns for a type of use the gallons, the amount of claim, okay? And the type of use, those are the numbers that I gave you earlier from one to 16, okay? And uh, the second screenshot here, you can see this is about, so the form actually continues. So you have kerosene used in aviation, depending on your business, okay? And uh, so the same the same uh, information here, 
and uh, the third thing I want to show you here is uh, actually there there are more so the third screenshot here so it keeps going on here you can see on the screen here you have a complete schedule C for claims only if you are reporting liability in part one or part two of form 720 okay so here we have uh, we continue the form here and then another screenshot so you can see that this is a, a two page or three page uh, form schedule C and you have to use the one that applies to you I want to talk to you about part three so on part three of uh, this form you will calculate your total taxes by adding the totals from part one and part two and putting the sum in box three okay and one thing I want to say as you can see this on the screen I'm showing you right now part three of form 720 on the screen so if you completed schedule C you want to add your total claims amount in box four you can see box four on the screen in box five you want to enter your excise tax deposits made for the quarter so if you overpaid in previous quarters you want to write the amount in box six and box seven you can see this on the screen and the box eight actually is the total of boxes five and six and box nine is the total of box four and eight you can see it here okay and uh, if your total tax in box three is greater than box nine you need to enter the difference which is your balance due in box, in box 10. You see that? Line 10, balance due, okay? So you'll have to pay this amount with your return filing of Form 720. On the other hand, if box 9 is greater than uh, box 3, you can indicate that you wish to do, you can, you can indicate what you wish to do with the overpayment, okay? So you can have the IRS refund the amount to you or you can apply the amount to your next return. It's totally up to you. Okay, now so you can see here, so... Now, if you have a third party designee, that's totally fine also because you, you need to sign and date IRS Form 720. Now, if you are going to designate a third party, such as your CPA, your enrolled agent, your accountant, your accountant, uh, yeah, regular accountant, if you want to this person to discuss your return with the IRS, you need to indicate this in the third party designee section. You see that? And you have to put the designee name, their phone number. You have to put their their uh, PI and their personal identification number, okay? And um, and you have to sign. So additionally, if you're an accountant, let's say you're an accountant or a tax preparer, if they did prepare the form for you, they fill in their information in the section where it says paid preparer use only. So the IRS knows who did the work, and the the uh, tax preparer has to put their PTI in. Which is their professional that it, it's a it's a number by which the iris knows that they have been registered with them and so on and so forth okay so this is really it so you have part one you have part two and you have part three one thing i want to say before closing to this conversation is that um you have to be very careful about uh, form 720 make sure you pay your balance due if necessary very important you want to file form 720 before the specified due date right there are two ways to file so you can mail form 720 directly to the IRS, not a problem or you can file electronically if you are completing the form through the IRS e-file program so those are really important so when you file form 720 you must also pay your balance due i've, I've said that before this is from box 10 of part 3. you can pay your balance with a direct debit check or money order so if you're filing electronically you must pay with a direct debit okay and now if you're filing physically you can complete form 720 v which is the payment voucher form that will accompany your check or money order to pay your balance due. this is totally possible not a problem okay and you will then send the form 720 v in with your completed form 720 when you file to uh, with the irs those are things you have to see it depends on your budget depends on your resources your on your cash flow position okay and those are really so let me give you a few tips to help you streamline you know when it comes to completing irs form 720. prepare ahead of time because one of the best ways to avoid errors and stress when completing tax forms such as a form 720 is to stay organized right you want to keep track of your inventory very important sales and other important financial metrics 
using good accounting software we talk about you choose the one that works for you but yeah or you can have an accountant so you want your accountant to be aware of your business in and out okay so this way when it's time to file a form 720 all all of your information will be up to date right organized and complete additionally you want to keep up with the semi-monthly excise tax payments and quarterly filing deadlines for form 720 right i've said this before there are two dates you have the semi-monthly uh, payment pattern and the quarterly filing pattern because if you are unprepared you are more likely to make mistakes on the form or even file late which may trigger penalties okay now you can also file um, electronically which is our preferred option okay you may be you may be able to save time paper stamps and hassle by using the irs's e-file program in addition you will not be relying on the mail system to meet your deadline and you can uh, the cool thing also is that filing form 720 electronically can make it easier to look up information in your accounting software refer to the irs filing instructions and check for irs updates which is really cool okay and use a tax professional if you hire a tax advisor to complete or help you complete form 720 you'll have access to someone with years of experience so a good tax professional should be able to complete the form quickly and accurately and if issues arise after you file form 720 your tax pro will be able to address them for you okay and also a tax pro may be able to represent you before the IRS. so it's all it's all it's really really good <music> Thank you so much for your attention. I really appreciate it. In today's conversation, I'll talk to you about how to file Form 720. So I give you an overview, the audience of this tax forms, the timing, the payment, the instructions, the step-by-step -step instructions. And last but not the least, I'm giving you the recap here. Thank you so much for your attention. I really appreciate it. I'll see you next time. But until then, remember, stay marvelous.